What if we told you that EVs are a scam, a hoax, and a threat to the world? That's what the CEO of Toyota, one of the biggest car makers in the world, thinks. And he's not afraid to say it out loud. Today, we are going to expose the truth behind his shocking statements and reveal the facts and figures that he doesn't want you to know. Toyota is one of the world's largest and most successful car manufacturers, with a reputation for quality, reliability, and innovation. The company is also known for being a pioneer in hybrid technology, with more than 20 years of experience since releasing the first Prius. However, when it comes to fully electric zero-emission vehicles, Toyota seems to be lagging behind its rivals. The company has been reluctant to embrace the EV revolution, preferring to stick to its hybrid and fuel cell strategy, which it claims is more realistic and sustainable. But is this really the case? Or is Toyota just afraid of losing its market share and profits to the new players in the EV industry, such as Tesla, Volkswagen, and Hyundai? This is the question that many people are asking after hearing the controversial remarks made by Toyota's CEO, Koji Sato, at a recent press conference. Sato, who took over as Toyota's CEO in April 2023, after the former CEO Akio Toyota stepped down, has been vocal about his skepticism and criticism of the EV trend. He has repeatedly warned that a rapid and massive shift to EVs would have negative consequences for the car industry, the economy, and the environment. He has also accused other automakers of exaggerating the benefits and potential of EVs while ignoring the challenges and drawbacks. Sato's anti-EV stance has sparked a lot of debate and controversy in the car industry and the public. He has made some bold and provocative statements that challenge the common belief that EVs are a green, popular, and innovative solution to the problems of climate change and mobility. Let's examine some of the arguments that Sato has used to support his position and the counter-arguments that his opponents have put forth. One of the main arguments that Sato has used to criticize EVs is that they are not as green as they seem. He has claimed that EVs are not really zero-emission vehicles because they depend on the electricity grid, which is still largely powered by fossil fuels. This means that the emissions from power plants that generate the electricity used to charge EVs must be taken into account when calculating the overall carbon footprint of EVs. Sato has also argued that the production and disposal of EV batteries would create a huge amount of carbon dioxide and waste, which would offset the environmental gains of EVs. Finally, he has suggested that EVs could increase global warming by reducing the demand for oil and gas, which would lower their prices and encourage more consumption. However, Sato's opponents have pointed out that his arguments are based on outdated or incomplete information. They have argued that the electricity grid is becoming cleaner and more renewable, thanks to the growth of solar, wind, and hydropower. They have also pointed out that the production and disposal of EV batteries are being addressed by new technologies and regulations that promote recycling, reuse, and reduction of hazardous materials. Finally, they have argued that the reduction of oil and gas consumption is a desirable goal that would benefit the environment, the economy, and national security. Another argument that Sato has used to criticize EVs is that they are not as popular as they seem. He has claimed that EVs are not really in high demand, but rather are being pushed by governments and regulators, who are imposing strict emission standards and offering generous subsidies and incentives to promote EV adoption. He has also argued that EVs are not really affordable or accessible for most consumers, especially in emerging markets, where the infrastructure and income levels are not adequate for EVs. However, Sato's opponents have pointed out that his arguments ignore the fact that EV sales are growing rapidly and that many consumers are choosing EVs because of their superior performance, lower operating costs, and environmental benefits. They have also argued that the role of governments and regulators is to create a level playing field for all types of vehicles, not just to favor one over the other. Finally, they have argued that the affordability and accessibility of EVs are improving thanks to technological advances, economies of scale, and innovative business models such as car sharing and ride hailing. Let's take a closer look at some of the facts and figures behind Sato's claims and see how they compare with the reality of the EV market. First, let's talk about the environmental impact of EVs. 
Indeed, EVs are not completely emission-free, as they depend on the electricity source that powers them. However, it is also true that EVs are much more efficient and cleaner than conventional cars, even when using electricity from fossil fuels. According to a study by the International Energy Agency, IEA, EVs emit on average 50% less carbon dioxide than comparable gasoline cars over their lifetime. Taking into account the emissions from the power generation, the battery production, and the vehicle operation. This gap is expected to widen as the electricity grid becomes more renewable and the battery technology improves. The IEA also estimates that EVs could save 1.5 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year by 2030, equivalent to the annual emissions of Japan and Brazil combined. Moreover, EVs can reduce other harmful pollutants, such as nitrogen oxides and particulate matter, that affect air quality and human health. Second, let's talk about the popularity and affordability of EVs. EVs accounted for only 18% of total car sales in 2023, according to the IEA. However, sales exceeded 14 million in 2023, a 35% increase from 2022. Factors such as consumer preference, technological innovation, and policy support drive this growth. EVs offer lower running costs, higher performance, and more choices and are becoming more competitive and affordable as battery prices drop, charging infrastructure expands, and incentives increase. The IEA predicts that EVs could reach 35% of global car sales by 2030 and 60% by 2040. Third, let's talk about the innovation and vision of EVs. While other technologies can contribute to the decarbonization and diversification of the car industry, such as hydrogen, biofuels, and shared mobility, EVs are the most mature and proven technology available today. They have a lot of potential for improvement and innovation and are enabling new features and functions, such as smart connectivity, autonomous driving, and vehicle-to-grid integration, creating new opportunities and challenges in the process. So, what can we conclude from this analysis? We can conclude that Satu's warning to all EVE makers is not based on solid facts and figures but rather on his own opinions and preferences. We can also conclude that Sato's warning is not very effective or convincing, as it does not reflect the reality and the trends of the EV market. We can finally conclude that Sato's warning is not very helpful or constructive, as it does not offer any alternative or solution for the future of cars and the environment. Therefore, we think that Sato's warning should not be taken seriously or literally, but rather as a sign of his frustration and fear of losing his position and power in the car industry. We think that Sato should stop being so negative and defensive and start being more positive and proactive. We think that Sato should embrace the EV revolution and join the efforts and initiatives of other car makers, governments, and consumers who are working together to make the world a better and cleaner place. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting about the EV market and Toyota's CEO. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends and family. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of our latest uploads. Thank you for watching and see you next time.